Underwater gameplay presents specific physics developers need to match to the action on screen. For instance, when controlling a character or vessel underwater, the player must feel buoyancy. They must feel water resistance. Get this aspect nailed on, and underwater combat can be some of the most immersive battles in gaming. It is perhaps owing to the difficulty and resource intensity of rendering water and then placing controllable characters therein that solid underwater combat experiences are few and far between. Situating a game underwater offers enemies not often seen in gaming too, from conventional sea life like octopuses or spiny fish to mythical otherworldly creatures. After all, the deepest deep sea trenches on planet Earth are still largely unexplored. So who knows what's down there? Super Mario Sunshine 2002's Super Mario Sunshine for the Nintendo GameCube is a title famous for its beautiful rendering of water. Surface-level water was crystal clear up close and marred with aquatic texture the further away Mario was from the water. For Super Mario Sunshine's Ely Mouth boss, Mario takes a deep dive into the murkier realms of Noki Bay, into a massive submerged chamber. Ely Mouth is a ginormous eel-type creature whose gum disease is spreading pollution. Mario's task is to avoid Ely's toxic purple tears, to jet wash their teeth a sparkling clean purifying the bay's water in the process. Sonic the Hedgehog Ah, being submerged in those early Sonic games brings back haunting memories of that tense, jagged, drowning countdown jingle. The stress of anxiously finding an air bubble is at its most heightened in the first Sonic the Hedgehog game's Labyrinth Zone Act 3. Cascading down the intricate maze of Labyrinth Zone's flooded ruins, only to be met with Dr. Robotnik hovering in his Eggmobile, chasing the Doctor down with floodwaters rapidly rising and hella annoying spears jutting out of the platforms. It's a rather horrific encounter, alleviated only by the fact it takes barely longer than two minutes to get the blue blur back to the surface and away from that haunting jingle. We need to go deeper. This cooperative roguelike tasks players with diving deep into the Jules Verne-inspired undersea universe in command of a submarine. Constant communication with your crewmates is essential to survival, as the unexplored undersea trenches dynamically alter their difficulty on every expedition. The action switches between player avatars scurrying inside the submarine's chambers, piloting, plugging holes, loading torpedoes, and external shots where the submarine comes hull to face with the game's deep sea dwelling creatures. There's charm to We Need to Go Deeper's underwater combat, aided in no small part to the whimsical art style. No matter how perilous the voyage to 1500 fathoms becomes, it'll always be fun. Undertow this intense underwater action shooter takes place on an alternate planet Earth, ravaged by an alien threat, who've melted the polar ice caps to eliminate humanity, but they didn't count on a plucky band of elite underwater divers who are sent to combat the alien threat. Undertow's action is fast and explosive, with vast range of missiles, depth charges, and undersea weaponry with which to wipe out the alien threat. The slushiness of swimming through water really shines through, too, with missiles near enough impossible to swim out of the path off, meaning you're better off strategically positioning yourself before blasting all the smithereens. Deluvian One of the two Jules Verne-inspired deep-sea diving adventures on this rundown Deluvian is an exploration game at heart with RPG elements and blistering submarine combat. You're tasked with captaining your very own submarine as you voyage through the realms of submerged civilization. Scouring for loot to upgrade your vessel, you'll encounter other submarines or deadly creatures on your quest, with battles taking place in real time, with a bounty of underwater firepower to engage in life or death deep sea dogfights. Weapons in Deluvian are less like torpedoes and more like laser beams you'd find in an outer space sim. Deluvian is all the better for it though as the slower pace of the submarines compared to something more airborne makes combat a much more strategic affair. Deep Black Developed by Bayard and published by 505 Games, Deep Black was supposed to have complex science fiction mystery, espionage, and bioterror. Unfortunately, the game failed to deliver on its promise and finished up with a pretty underwhelming critical reception. However, it did one thing right. The game was praised for its underwater control mechanics, the underwater combat mechanics, like melee and shooting, seemed like a lot of fun as players took on underwater mech-like creatures and human enemies. Song of the Deep This action game was brought to you by Insomniac Games, 
the brains behind the impeccable Spider-Man games. The game's narrative follows a young girl's quest into the murky depths, combining discovery, skill, and suspense, as she survives long enough to unravel the story's central mystery. On her journey inside her one-person micro-sub, she encounters a host of subaquatic monsters, from squelchy jelly lanterns to huge spiny fish with formidable teeth. Weaponry is somewhat unconventional in Song of the Deep 2. Alongside the usual torpedoes and depth charges is a spinning pendulum which will swing outwards to bludgeon foes to death, and even a mechanical claw arm that grabs projectiles that are hurtling your way. Echo the Dolphin Echo the Dolphin's story is vibrant, beautiful, and bonkers, with Echo traveling through time to rescue his family abducted by aliens. The game's impenetrable difficulty is legendary, too. It was so hard by design, predominantly to lengthen rental periods in the early 90s. For combat, this meant that the game's seahorse and giant octopus enemies were capable of one-shotting Echo. Even touching enemies caused Echo to sustain damage. In retaliation, though, Echo had more than a few tricks up his sleeve. His sonar song can be upgraded mid-game, allowing him to charge it into a long-range projectile that will cause damage, disorientate, or freeze enemies. The final battle with the Vortex Queen is pure nightmare fuel, though, taking place in a dark claustrophobic chamber against a gargantuan head-like creature, with one false move killing Echo dead. Depth Hunter 2 Deep Dive Imagine spearfishing as an extreme sport, and you're almost there with Depth Hunter 2 Deep Dive. Players can dive deep into tropical waters on the hunt for exotic fish species, utilizing an ancient fishing method known as breath-holding spearfishing. Just like real life, players need to coordinate their breath and energy levels whilst monitoring their prey, with each hunting situation offering a tactical challenge alongside the act of spearing itself. The coral-laden underwater paradises on offer in Depth Hunter 2 Deep Dive are visually stunning, too, with the game's photographic element an intriguing exploration mechanic to complement the hunting. Aquaria This subaquatic action-adventure features a formidable number of creatures with which to do underwater battle with. There are 175 of them, in fact. Aquaria takes place in a massive deep-sea realm that's teeming with ancient secrets. Surviving every encounter is key to unlocking the game's mysteries. The game's free aim system can yield frustrating results in combat, though, with targeting proving rather difficult at times alongside the swimming physics. Get the knack, though, and projectiles hurtle through water kaleidoscope-like, with the game's playable character Naija swimming arcs around her subaquatic foe. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.